Hey guys, thanks for checking out this video. I just performed at my first live, like in-person magic show post-quarantine, and I wanted to share my experience about it with you. Be sure to stick to the end so you can find out what you can use from what I've learned to book your in-person shows. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Slightly More Podcast. I'm one of your hosts. Chris Michael. I'm Shane Patrick Cruz. Welcome back. We are outside of Chris's mansion in the city. <laughs> it's not it's like a it's like a half house. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a crackhead right Actually, here. Actually, it really is like not even joking. It's not I know that's not the term, but it is a house that is split in half because the city that's just how they like to do it. Oh really? Do you see that? Look that yellow oh, part of the mind. So yeah. Um, um all right. But anyway, we had a really interesting uh, topic come up that we wanted to talk about that will benefit a lot of the magicians and performers out there. I just recently, for the first time since the Corona season lockdown. When was your last show? In-person show. Before this? Yeah. March 10th. Really? Yeah. March 10th? Yeah. Or so, Mar yeah, March 12th, actually. So, yeah. So we're June 10th or June 9th right now. So, man, it's been a while. Was that first, three months? Yeah, not yeah. my first show. I've done a lot of virtual stuff. Yeah. I've and if you count my Instagram lives, I've done a lot. Hundreds. Yeah. But um as in terms of like actual physical performance, being there physically in person, it's been what did you say, three months? Three yeah, three months. And so That's I amazing, wanted to share yeah. my experience with that. What are people feeling? What is their mindset when they have somebody come in from the outside to perform? Are they weird about uh, getting close? And it was a walk around gig, so how did I handle uh, touching my volunteers and handing them props. How do we go about that is everything that we're going to talk about in this episode. Um, I think Shane had some questions about this too. Shane, Shane didn't come with me to this one. Um, I went alone and I think that would have made it a little bit simpler for everything going on. So. Yeah. So no, let's give some context to the actual show. So how many people did you say were, were So this there? was a first birthday, which if you guys don't do first birthdays, that doesn't mean it's a kid's show. It really, is not. It's for yeah, the adults. Usually they're at breweries. Yeah. <laughs> so but this one at somebody's house. Yeah, it's at somebody's house, nice house. So it's got like, uh, they just had a new house. So it's kind of like a housewarming slash first birthday party. Um, there are no actual kids there other than the first year old birthday kid. Yeah. Um, and about 30 or so adults, maybe ages, I don't know, 30 to 40. But they were um, spread out over, because you said it was a big place, right? Yeah. So, so not everybody was tight. It was, so it was outside. Well, like, they did end up getting pretty tightly packed because at the towards the middle to end, mostly everybody was on their patio. Okay. So yeah. it ended up getting a little closely packed. You could see over time how people kind of started to get more comfortable, come together. Plus, it was a pool party. So people were sw swimming in the pool together. Yeah. So. Um, and so, uh, how did, like, when you arrived, were, uh, like, actually, first off. When I was getting there, one of the things that I was thinking about, I was really nervous because not that I felt rusty in my performance, which I knew I was going to, I was actually kind of excited for that to be able to work on the same tricks that I performed for years now felt brand new to me. That was yeah. really exciting. But the other thing was, I didn't know if people were gonna let me put sponge balls in their hands, which is like, you know, if you're not a magician, it's this thing where you make things appear inside people's hands. Would they be weird about touching that? Especially something that's spongy and squishy like yeah. that. Also, some of the other stuff I do, like putting coins in shoulders, loading watches, this all involves- Like actually me. having to touch people, yeah. Yeah, and I want people to be used to me touching them, getting into their space. It's easier for me to create a magic moment that yeah. way. I didn't know what was gonna be the perception on their part, how squeamish they would be. But I didn't know one thing going into this. They are a group of people who probably before everyone else decide to have a party of 30 people in their backyard. So I yeah. knew that they weren't on the far end of being super worried about this. Right. Did you, were there any kind of conversation when you got there about, you know, hey guys, I'm, you, I'm going to be putting things and you're, you're going to be touching things. Does anybody have an issue? Did you have any kind of conversation? No, I didn't bring it up to the client because I knew I would deal with it in the moment. There was a lot of okay. tricks I could use to adapt to make it. Right. You know what I mean? Like sponge balls, I could use a pocket that's empty. Show the pocket right. empty first. You yeah. know, it would be less impactful, but you know, you got to work with what you got. Right. Plus, you know, I could always do the tricks like extreme burns that doesn't involve people to touch things. Yeah. And hey, benefit to me, more than likely people wouldn't want to inspect my props, which was really cool. <laughs> that actually could be an added benefit. But um, what I did do is I, as soon as I got there, I shook the hand, the birthday dad, um, with the, the host, I shook right. his hand right when I came in, he offered the handshake and right away my anxiety kind of drained out. It's like, you yeah. know what? That felt pretty normal and natural. It yeah. took a little bit more effort, like a little bit more thought on my part to shake his hand. It wasn't so automatic, 
But from then on, anytime somebody extended their hand, I kind of would take a mental note. Okay, this person's okay with touch. Right. There were a couple people who weren't, but I didn't ask them to hold stuff. In the beginning of the gig, when I was asking people to like hold on to a marker or a sponge ball, I just made the quick statement of, hey, my props have been cleaned and I'm healthy. Would you feel comfortable just holding on to this for, yeah. for a moment? And they always said yes. They said yes so quick and so fast and without so without any effort that I didn't even need to ask anymore. I just went, you know what? They're, it's kind of implied that people are just going to be doing that. Yeah. And actually, when people started seeing the reaction and they're opening their hands and they're seeing people freak out, people didn't want to turn that away just to be safe. You know, plus, I carried hand sanitizer with me, so that was a, bon a bonus too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I just I have this feeling that the vast majority of people are just they don't care. Right. You know what? So it's it's, like, in, it's almost unnatural. For the first time, I felt like not being close and not touching people was an unnatural thing. Like, yeah. There were girls trying to play chicken. The one person who didn't shake my hand when I initiated it, didn't shake my hand, I realized how unnatural that felt. And I wonder, I'm like, if this would have went on any longer, would that have turned and shifted? But Right. I just think people are going to go back to normal. Yeah. The and, vast majority of people. And, you know, when I first talk to the client she said that they didn't want to gather everybody for a show because they want to put everybody in a confined space like right. that i did like a little 10 minute set or maybe it was 15 minute set at the end of the party before i left saying bye to everybody for everyone they all gathered in this tight space people had their <laughs> arms around each other people just they're people, sitting on laps it was you know people are used to that though yeah i mean maybe it's in the next podcast episode i'll have the coronavirus but you know <laughs> yeah, I let's hope not um the i think the other thing to take away is that you because you've been doing so many live shows you know on instagram and facebook and zoom and that sort of thing the timing needs to be quicker and so when you got to actually in person it's something that it's probably going to take a couple of shows to get back into right just the yeah the in-person timing is much much different than like being on a live so aside from like the virus and the health risks just in terms of coming out of this and being a performer again it's going to be a little awkward i felt my social skills as sad as it was to say weren't as good as they were i'm sure it's like riding a bike like i'll pick right. it back up immediately yeah. but i was lingering a little too long sometimes and sometimes i didn't feel i was being as personable my magic was a little rusty and i could feel it but that was okay because it gives me something to work on now mm -hmm. and then also there was a moment in this i don't know if i told you i think i told another magician my friend zach alexander but uh, i was doing lit you know where you take the match well i was doing yeah. the first part the classic trick where you take the match out i eat it and then you spit it back in the matchbook yeah. Well, I was going through the match. I say, just say stop. Like they're picking a card almost. And they said, stop. And I stopped the exact spot that they said. And I, and it was just mm. so weird to me. So I went, oh, that was so weird to do that without a delay. I told the mm. guy out loud. He's like, what? I was like, ah, don't worry about it. Uh, yeah. But literally, like, normally I say stop. And I kind of have to online. Here's a little behind the scenes. I anticipate when they're going to say stop and actually stop early. Because by the time they say stop on video, it looks like I stopped the exact spot. Right. Really, really, really hard to do. And you don't always get it. Yeah. Um, it was so effortless to literally just stop when they say stop. Yeah. It was like the simplest thing blew my mind. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely felt rusty. My social skills weren't as up to par. And I definitely um, feel like I can pick it back up a little bit quicker. I don't know that in-person shows are going to be coming back as quickly as I would like to see them. But the fact that I even did one is a good sign. I think that because a lot of places phase two is up to 50 people, uh, which is super weird because like all the riots that have been happening. And it's like uh, I saw one that uh, was actually from the state government that said um, up to 50 people outside in a group and up to 100 for protests. Like what? it's more than wait, 100. Wait, anyway, a, but... wait a second. Um, so, um, oops. So I think that the small shows are going to be big for the rest of the year. The smaller engagements are going to be big. And something, then next year we'll get back into the, into the bigger shows. Something I thought about, I was actually listening to Joe Rogan talk about this, was that little things are going to be so impactful that you don't need to be so lavish anymore for the first few right. months coming back. Going to dinner with your corporate team where they normally would want to spice it up and have a magician is already spiced up because they're having dinner together. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they don't want to mm, overcomplicate it. They're not going to want to have extra things in the mix. They just want to get back, enjoy a meal together. That's going to be really cool. The problem is, so, but the benefit to us, but their problem is, so many people are going to be doing those dinners, trying to get together. All your friends you haven't seen in months are going to be hitting you up to link back up. In person, social connection mm. gatherings are going to become real tedious real fast. 
people will remember how much it sucks to be around people without entertainment. Yeah. So it's a good it's a good opportunity to provide value to reach out and provide value um, without selling. Yeah. Meaning like reaching out to a company and saying, hey, listen, exactly saying exactly that. Like, hey, listen, I'm sure you all are super excited about getting together again and seeing everybody again. Something else that's of note is remote work is going to be skyrocketing over the next year or so because of this. A lot of companies have moved their employees to But that to probably remote. means that events, they're going to go a little bit bigger on. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what I was going to say. So it's an opportunity for you to be the expert in the event space for the corporate client if you do corporate client stuff, uh, if you do corporate work. So, you know, you reaching out to them and saying, hey, here's some ideas that you all can do since you're coming back. I'm sure you've got some remote workers that now you don't see each other in the office every day. You know, in-person events are a great opportunity for you all. Here's some ideas around that. You don't even need to throw in the magic thing. The magic thing is inherently thrown in because you are a magician reaching out, giving the advice. Make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I just think it's going to be really easy for us to come back in quarter four. I think quarter three, I don't, I wouldn't expect to see very much work yeah. at all. That, that Even, was, go ahead. That, no, that's it. I, I just really feel like quarter three is going to be maybe a time for you to develop personally. And you, instead of focusing on gigs, focus on your friends and family that you can see. And then quarter four, yeah. just be prepared to come back really heavy. But yeah, once again, uh, provide value in quarter three. That way in quarter four, when they're ready for that, hopefully they remember you. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, the other thing is I just saw Broadway. They were originally going to come back in uh, July, and now they have pushed it to September. So Broadway's not even coming back till September. Uh, for those magicians that watch this, you know Steve Cohen. Uh, and if you don't, you should. He's the millionaire, uh, millionaire magician. He's got the huge show up in New York that sells out literally every single night. Um, he even said that smaller shows are gonna be what sells over the next year. Um, so look into that and offer that to your clients. Continue to offer virtual entertainment. Don't, yeah. don't be, cause one of the things me and Shane were just talking about, I'll just give this to you guys as a thank you for watching this thing. Um, we were talking about reaching out to universities who haven't started orientation yet yeah. and asking to offer an event online for orientation so that the students can still feel like they're involved. They're building that school loyalty, that trust and that pride which they may not get unless they're getting that really powerful in-person experience. So you can really help with that. Yeah, and so, you say that because the local the local university here is having their uh, freshman orientation online. Yeah, yeah. And so. I mean, our orientation was a great time for me. I saw a lot of performances. Yeah. In fact, I even did a little performance that kind of shaped <laughs> me becoming a magician there. But, yeah. Um, so that might be an opportunity for people of like looking at what is normally an in-person event is now switched to being an online event and how you provide value for that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really everything we wanted to cover. I yeah, hope that this it. helps put things in perspective and kind of answer a lot of questions. There's a lot of people who don't know what it's going to look like when things come back. I think there's a few different personality types. Not going to get into this because we're kind of wrapping up here, but like the disc profile stuff. Yeah. I think the people who are more structured and kind of more worried about things that think things through a little more, they'll be the ones that come back later. Yeah. But right now, the you know the dominant guys, the influencing guys, guys who just want to put their top down and let the wind go through their hair they're already starting to do in-person events again. So, I mean, just, it's gonna be a, a split for sure. So don't expect it all come back at once, but I did hope that, I do hope that this gives you some sort of encouragement that things are turning around. Yeah, let us know. If, are you starting to book in-person shows? Uh, let us know, hit us up and uh, tell us how that's going for you. And the last thing I'm gonna ask you guys to do, because I'm really pushing this heavily everywhere, please go follow me on Instagram at Chris Mike Magic. That way you can see the behind the scenes of what I'm doing to set up for in-person shows, the shows themselves and other content that we make. We would love to have you guys over there and be a part of the team. Yep, all right, see you guys.